What's up, everyone? Welcome to Power Play with CJ. Today we're gonna do the uh, mock draft. Continue it with our uh, picks 11 through 20. And what I decided I'm gonna do is the first round. I'm gonna break it up into three parts. I've already, po already posted the first part. Um, both obviously all three with the 10 picks. So 10, 10, or you know, 1 through 10, 11 through 20, 21 through 30. And then after that, I got the second and third rounds done. And uh, I'll get those up. I'll, I'll go round by round the rest of the drafts. I should have a full seven round mock draft this year. I'm not doing what I did last year with the PowerPoint slides, the pictures, and it looks cute. It's about substance, not style. Plain and simple. If if you're that interested in looking at, you know, first of all, I don't think anyone else is doing a seven round mock draft for one. And for two, this is how I'm doing it. So, you know, I, I don't. I'd rather just do it this way than sit in front of a computer for hours on end, editing pictures, crediting pictures, you know. Saving them JPEG, putting them in order. It's just stupid. I can do it like this, and I give you some more analysis along the way of my thoughts on each pick. So, without further ado, the eleventh pick, Nashville Predators. I got them taking our cast recap, and you know I think Peter Laviolette's gonna go for some European forwards, or not even European forwards, high end forwards. Um, you know that's gonna be a new stamp of the organization, and uh, Dave Poyle, I, th I think we'll draft Kapanen. Um, you know I think he's he'll be the best player available at that point. Um, so that's. I can be a good pick. The uh, 12th pick, the Phoenix Coyotes. I could have taken Nick Ritchie. Um, I talked about him ad nauseum. Peterborough Pete's big kid, huge kid. A um, lot of upside, but not uh, some inconsistency. So, you know, he, he needs more time in junior hockey to iron out his kinks. But at the end of the day, he could be someone that's definitely a, a um, power play fixture um, in the in the desert. You know, the Arizona Coyotes, now I should say. Politically correct, I'm sorry, Phoenix. Uh, I, I don't know what's wrong. I apologize to the rest of Arizona. Uh, they have Washington Capitals. Like, I'm taking Kevin Fiela. You know, I, I just think he's going to be a good fit, good offensive mind. You know, good skill set that fits the system that they're going to build there. And, you know, Trotsy is going to be a, do a hell of a co job coaching that team. And, uh, you know, new management staff in place. I think he's going to be a guy that they, you know, they try to make a statement with with their first pick. And, you know, I think he's, he's got a lot of upsides. So he's pretty good. Um, the Dallas Stars I, at the 14th pick. I've gone back and forth in this pick probably about a dozen or so times, but uh, after much deliberation, I got him taking a uh, Sunny Milano, U.S. National Team Development Program. I was high on him before, you know, the stick tricks and all that other stuff, um, you know, because I, I recognize how good he is as a hockey player. He's got one of the best sets of hands, if not the best set of hands in this draft. Uh, going to Boston College, you know, obviously a great producer of uh, quality NHL talent. So, you know, that's going to be a, um, you know, major advantage to his development. And uh, I think he's going to be one hell of a professional hockey player. So I got uh, Sonny Milano going 14th to the Dallas Stars. And then uh, 15th pick, the Detroit Red Wings. I got them taking the uh, the very talented Julius Honka, defenseman. You know, I think up in Swift Heart. And uh, you know, I think he's going to be an impact player for years to come. And, uh, you know, Detroit needs organizational depth at... Um, one defense on the blue line, and I think Honka gives him that. You know, I think he's a few years, a few years away from contributing on a consistent basis, but um, you know, I think he'll be definitely a player to watch going forward. Detroit has a great track record at producing quality NHL players. 16th pick, Columbus Blue Jackets. I am taking out Brennan Perlini, Niagara Ice Dogs. I uh, questions about his consistency, but his, his productivity is there. You know, I know a lot of people have him ranked higher than I do. Maybe I have him too high. Maybe I have him too low. But I think Columbus is a safe, safe bet for him. You know that they, they um, they've got a deep organization. They, you know, they had three first round picks last year in a very, very deep draft. And uh, you know, going out after a guy like Perlini is definitely, um, you know, give him time to develop, see what he is going forward. Again, the consistency is is an issue, but at the same time, you know, you can't question the kid's talent. And uh, I think hockey was referenced one of the games of the World Under 18s. He did nothing for all but two shifts. But on those, sh on those two shifts, he scored the only two goals of the game. So, you know, you got to look at, you know, the pros and cons and like that. But, again, I, I think he's he's worth a flyer on um, with the 16th pick. Speaking of flyers, 17th pick, the Philadelphia Flyers, the the the, uh, the host team. I'll be there in Philly, city of brotherly love. I, I went back and forth in this pick. I literally got about four different names I've cr scratched out uh, with the Flyers. But I'm going to take a roll of McEwen out of the uh, Kingston Frontenacs. I think he's going to be a good defenseman for a long time, and Philly has an organizational um, need for quality defensemen. I think McEwen could be just that. And, uh, you know, they could trade this pick and make a splash 
at the draft, a la the New Jersey Devils last year with uh, Corey Schneider uh, trading, you know, their first round pick when they were hosting the draft to uh, to Vancouver to get Schneider. But you know, I think that's gonna be who uh, who Philly goes with um, with that seventeenth pick. The eighteenth pick, the Minnesota Wild. I'm taking Jared McCann, uh, center from uh, Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. Uh, really gritty competitor. Um, kind of Mike Richards. Ask a little, not, maybe not as high end offensive as Richards, but you know, they get a lot of skilled guys in Minnesota. And adding a guy like McCann to kind of center your third line, kill penalties, you know, be on the second power play unit, stuff like that. That's what you need. You know, want a big face off, throw a hit late in the game. You know, that's kind of, you look at the way Minnesota's put their team. I think, um, you know, he's going to be a very, very good fit with the Wild. Uh, the night number 19 pick, their first of two first round picks this year, the Tampa Bay Lightning. I got to take out Dylan Lock in United States National Team Development Program, going to the uh, University of Michigan, the Wolverines for Red Berenson. You know, I think he's going to be, um, you know, not exactly Ryan Callahan, but something like that. You know, just a, a player of that that style. You know, where you, you know he goes out there, he hits his ass off, he four checks, uh, kills penalties. You know, is a fan favorite for the way he plays the game. The hustle brings on a night and night up basis. And you look at the way Tampa has all this high end talent. Obviously, Stamkos, namely, but you look at Drew Ann, you look at, um, you know, Kucherov, you look at all these other really really skilled forwards. You need some guys that can go out there and just bang around and you know open up time and space and you know keep opposing keep opposing defensemen on the four check. And I think Larkin's going to be that. I think he'll be a good fit uh, on Tampa Bay. And, um, you know, I think he'll be a guy to watch going forward. You know, he's going to be definitely, he's definitely going to be, as I put my words out of order, like a fool, um, a player to watch for Team USA at the World Juniors this year as well. And then the final pick for this segment, I got the San Jose Sharks taking Ivan Barbashev, um, you know, from the Moncton Wildcats. It's, you know, gonna, gives you a little bit of everything. Good offensive, good defensive game at the same time. And uh, I think he's going to be an impact player in, in San Jose for a long time. And I, I like the way he plays the game. And, um, you know, I, I think San Jose standing packed with their organizational philosophies, um, you know, means this, this, this is going to be a good fit for him. You know, and again, this draft isn't as deep as last year's draft, but there's still good players to be found. And I think you got to think outside the box on a lot of these picks. I mean, I know I have Milano rated higher than a lot of people do, but I think you look at what he can do and his upside, it's like it's worth taking him there. You know, likewise with Richie, and uh, you know, kind of, kind of permeates throughout this draft. But anyway, that's what I got this episode of the Power Play with CJ on picks 11 through 20 of uh, my 2014 mock draft. Stay tuned for more episodes for the playoffs and beyond for the final or for the final. There's one game left. Later, guys.